everybody hope you're good my name is abby if you're new around here welcome and if you're not new thank you for coming back to watch another video so in today's video i wanted to talk about my experience with the la roche posay and thelios xl 50 plus x 50 plus sbl and this is the sunscreen i am talking about so so if you want to know what the tea is on this particular sunscreen, is it black skin approved? Is it mattifying? And is it all the things they claim it's supposed to be? Please keep watching. So the Anthelius XL 50 plus SPF is a UVA and UVB broad spectrum sunscreen. And the special thing I want to say about this is the uv filters in it so i say the uv filters i'm not going to read off every single thing i do know this does contain a special um uv uvb and uva filter and it is patented by l'oreal because obviously l'oreal owns i say obviously not everybody knows this l'oreal does own la roche posay so what's special about this particular sunscreen is that it contains the mexoplex patented filtering system so it does filter out uv and uvb rays now uh the first thing is the price so this originally retails for 18 pounds but you can get it on offer at most stores um at certain times in the year obviously around summer most retailers are trying to sell sunscreen because obviously it's needed so i managed to get this for 13 pounds 50 now i'll just read off the claims and then we'll talk about whether or not it does meet the claims at least the ones i can substantiate anyway so it says it's suitable for oily skin so it's also suited for a skin that's prone to sensitivity sun intolerance and prickly heat it says it's non-greasy easy to apply broad spectrum as in uva and uvb and infrared protection we've talked about the fact that it's for factor 50 plus now the thing about this is the plus is that um they do claim on the la roche posay website that the protection is actually stricter than the european recommendation so i think with a lot of these um uh, uh sunscreens that are created you actually have to allow for more than what's stated just to i guess maybe um to allow to allow for some of the maybe filters to degrade over time so you definitely have to like aim higher than the 50 as in you can't formulate to the actual point because maybe by the time it gets to the uh, consumer or you know maybe along the maybe after the consumer's had it once it's been open it starts to you know degrade so i think they have to take all of that into consideration so yeah, so they do claim that they do actually have um, a stricter policy than the European Union, which is, you know, than what the European Union recommend, which is um, quite a big claim. And then it also talks about the Mex Mexoplex uh, painted filtering system. So the Anthelios range, they say, has been tested on subjects in clinical studies, which is a big thing because a lot of these sunscreens um, that are created are created, I guess, based on theory or based on in vitro, in vitro studies. And that's like in little petri dishes whereas in vivo studies are on skin on humans so this targets those who suffer from all sorts of sun intolerances uh, particularly those caused by uva so it also promises to be water resistant another claim they they mention on the site is that they all have a high ppd which is persistent pigment factor so basically it's offering one of the best protection against uva again um, and all this is backed by um, so on the website it says they have 16 clinical studies which is massive I mean to even get one clinical study is amazing they have 16 separate clinical studies carried out by world renowned dermatologists so yeah you know they have invested a lot of money into um, this Anthelios range so I mean it definitely speaks to the size of the company that l'oreal is and you know how much money they invest into their sunscreen so that gives me a lot of confidence i mean they have their reputation on these sunscreens so they have to get it right um, and it also says on the site that it's recommended by nine out of ten dermatologists and what else am i missing anything so yeah on the box though so there was something i wanted to say so on the box i don't know if the 16 that they mentioned on the site is a typo or just maybe maybe a 
there have been more clinical studies substantiate you know there have been more clinical studies between when that copy was written for the site and when this was printed on the box because on the box it talks about you know the uva uvb broad broad, broad spectrum protection but it also says it's proven by 24 clinical studies so yeah there's a there's a bit of discrepancy between this box and the site just fyi and it also claims to have no white marks yes no white marks and it is a dry touch gel cream so or non-perfumed by the way so it also claims to be non-comedogenic on the box it actually does mention air Lecum technology so um, it says mattifying micro particles immediately absorb and control all sources of shine so that's in brackets sebum sweat and humidity yeah so there's a lot of things <laughs> that this um, sunscreen claims to do except for my taxes and take care of my child and what else and cook me breakfast lunch and dinner but yeah back to the actual claims itself the one thing the one big hump to get over with this is which kind of rubs me up the wrong way i guess initially it does anyway which is the no white marks claim so you see a little demo of me applying, if you haven't already, you see a little demo of me applying the sunscreen. And on the initial application, you see me struggle. I mean, the struggle is real with this particular sunscreen. 
um, in terms of rubbing it in and I guess because of the mattifying effects and maybe the dry down as I was trying to rub it in it did become quite hard like not hard like hard to rub in like it started to tug on my skin and that wasn't when I was happy with how it had settled obviously if I was happy I wouldn't keep rubbing so I don't think it's the most elegant in terms of formula maybe because of the mattifyingness <laughs> because of the mattifying effect um yeah so there is that and also when I did when I rubbed it as much as I could before I felt like it was going to start pilling I did see like a bit of ashiness on my skin now that ashiness was probably more pronounced around my hairline and catching where it caught on my hairs around the center of my face it actually wasn't that bad I think maybe on the darker areas and obviously like I said around the hairline that's when it was more pronounced so what I did do as you saw was to go over it with like my sunscreen stick and that tends to help so basically anytime I have like issues with like the uh, white mark and uh, the white marks are with um, like a white cast from sunscreen I'll just use a more emollient um, sunscreen just on those areas just to help it blend because for me it's more a case of blending because of such a thin layer a bit of blending will help that um, white cast go down a bit so that's what I did and you saw most of it actually did go the only thing that was left was the sunscreen that was caught on my brow hairs so that's there is that as well so obviously if you're a man and you do have beard uh, like a beard or moustache or any kind of facial hair it's probably going to catch on that and I don't know if it will rub in completely um, looking at the ingredients at the bottom of the ingredients it does actually have uh, nanoparticles of titanium dioxide which obviously we know titanium dioxide is one of the two mineral or physical sunscreens um, out there and they're both white powders so uh, yeah so that could be what I was seeing on my face eventually I think a couple of hours I'll show you the second shot of my what my face looked like after a few hours and it was I think it was fine I, I mean I couldn't see anything on the like perimeter of my face the center of my face was actually fine or like the slight ashy spots I could see before were I think mostly gone so I don't think it stays I think it will eventually disappear maybe I think with the sunscreen like this it might be worth maybe applying two layers I think every single time I've applied it I've applied it in just one layer and I'm only just now starting to get to grips with the concept of applying two layers two smaller layers rather than one big one so yeah sometimes I do remember most times I don't as you can see if, I mean if I did I would have done it in two layers but I just wanted to show you what most people will probably do which is just take a glob smack it on your face and rub it all and rub it you know all over so yeah there is that i like the fact that it is um not um scented i do prefer my sunscreens to not be scented anything that i apply to my face these days i kind of lean towards non-scented especially in sunscreen as well because i'm not sure about how you know the fragrance interferes with you know you know uva uvb rays i'm guessing it's fine because obviously they wouldn't have formulated it if fragrance was going to interfere um, you know at least we should we should trust the formulators that they actually they know what they're doing especially for a brand like l'oreal or slash the roche posay so yeah um there is that uh one other thing is has a 12 month use by a uh, little stamp on there which just shows you how long you have to use it and i love the packaging i do i mean i do like the packaging i know some people actually are a bit hit and miss with this type of packaging where there's a pump and there's it's also a squeezy tube um the size of it makes it easy to travel with i know that's a plus but um for me the pump is actually what makes it easier to like get the product out the only thing i'm thinking about is how the pump would work if once you start like getting to like the last dregs like will i be able to cut the pump off so i can get the last bit of sunscreen out so i don't know how that would work but we'll see we'll, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we get there but I do like the pump, it just makes it a bit more sophisticated um, and justifies the price. Would I get this for £18? Absolutely not. There are other sunscreens out there and especially for this size. I'm a, stick I'm a stickler for um, value for money in anything I get and 50ml is probably the minimum I would go for in terms of sunscreen for the face. And what really annoys me is that face sunscreens tends to come in these really teeny tiny packages like you're not going to get through them in two weeks if you use it more often like if we really if we all use sunscreen the way we're supposed to which is typically every two hours depending on the formulation this i will run through this in like a week 
50 mls is nothing so for that price especially if i got it for 18 pounds boy yeah it's not gonna work this relationship is not gonna work so i don't know if i mean i say i don't know i'm not getting into a relationship with this sunscreen if it's gonna cost me 18 pounds because i would run through it like nobody's business so yeah so that's that but i like the fact that it's mightifying because it is targeted for oily skin for sunscreen like this i think you would need to combine it with another one um just to make it for ease of use i definitely say apply it as much as you can but maybe do what i do use a sunscreen of a similar factor maybe 50 or more and uh, use it to blend out the perimeter like i did because you can layer your sunscreens you just need to be careful about mixing different factors um, of your sunscreen um yeah because then you you're gonna get like uneven protection so if you're gonna mix your sun mix your sunscreens try and make sure the formulas actually work together if you can do that much research and make sure they're they're at least both the same factor 50 protection so i think i would i i don't think i would be able to use this all on its own unless maybe it's on a day where i'm wearing makeup i wouldn't be able to like carry it down to my neck um because again actually that's the thing i think i would use a different sunscreen on my neck just to save me some money with this um and also because i don't need my neck to be matte i could use a typical regular sunscreen on my neck it's just my face that I need to be matte and more specifically it's just my t-zone so we could do a Gwyneth Paltrow and just apply it to the high points and then go in with um, a different sunscreen in other areas that I'm not so concerned about so you could do that if you wanted to so yeah I like it I don't love it I like it because it does what it says the tin except for the whole white mark easy formulation type of uh, claim which I am a bit iffy about only because I know it doesn't rub in as easily as I want it to but then is that a trade-off for the mattness that you're going to get because matte formulas tend to dry down quickly which is exactly what it did so I don't know can I penalize it for that I really don't know I would like the formula to be a bit more elegant but in the meantime I can definitely concentrate it on my t-zone like the whole center area and then maybe use a different sunscreen on the perimeter and on my neck so that's 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 my thoughts on that again um i should obviously preface this by saying that if you're gonna you know protect your skin there are so many other ways to protect your skin not just with sunscreen definitely with protective clothing um hats wide brim hats um and just avoiding the sun at high times of the day i guess it's from 10 to 2 uh yeah so just try to avoid going out in blazing sunlight with no protection at those times if you can and clothing clothing definitely helps for me i actually do that most times i tend to not wear like you know uh, well i guess maybe what you want to call revealing clothing i opt for maxi dresses because again i know they're flowy and they cover the majority of my body and the areas that are exposed are probably going to be my arms and my feet and my my face and my neck so most times I wear a maxi dress in summer or in heat and yeah so the majority of my body is covered anyway so those are some of the precautions you could take rather than having like a short dress I don't know if you're a woman I'm talking about women in general but yeah so maybe try that as well um like I said you definitely don't want to just depend on your sunscreen especially if we we know realistically we're not going to be applying it every two hours like we're supposed to so yeah those are my thoughts anyway ramble aside I do like this i don't love it it doesn't live up to all the claims but i love the fact that it's matte it's probably going to be the most mattifying sunscreen you will find on the market in my collection so far this is the most mattifying sunscreen and we definitely we definitely need more mattifying sunscreens um there there's just not enough they're not considering oily skin people nearly all sunscreens i've tried are either a satin finish or straight up greasy <laughs> so yeah there's that but anyway we need more we just need this formula to be tweaked a little bit and it'll be perfect so i love it i love the fact that it's just you know non fragrance as well that's a big thing for me um especially for my face my body i can have fragrance but for my face i tend to lean towards it but trust me if the formula is good i will live with the fragrance so yeah it's definitely a win but it's a tentative win in other words so if you like this video if you got a new value from it please don't forget to give it a thumbs up or comment down below let me know if you've tried this particular sunscreen what your thoughts are uh yeah <laughs> share with a friend 
subscribe there are loads of call to actions in this video subscribe and hit the notification bell while you're down there so you don't miss the next video from me i will be reviewing um i'll be doing singular um reviews for each of the sunscreens in my skincare stash so if you definitely want to keep up to date with that you want to hit the notification bell and you want to subscribe so you don't miss the next video i have a lot of sunscreens to review i feel like it's easier to do that just to talk about the sunscreens and their claims in depth it's a lot easier to at least digest all the information and actually make a more informed decision as to whether or not you want to go for it rather than trying to cram all those sunscreens i've used into one video yeah so there's that but anyway until next time stay blessed have a great morning afternoon evening or night wherever you are and I will see you in my next video. Bye.